top view, I think. So. Yeah, she's a professional. Yeah. Hello, Manny. Hello, Hello. Manny. <laughs> How is everyone? Everyone okay? Yeah, good. Fine, thank you. You all right? Yeah, okay, thank you. Just uh, finished prepping everything. Um, I yeah, I, I, it's I, your favourite subject, baking, Marnie. <laughs> Karen, you know me. I'm not very good at all. Well, I truly well, is... enjoy it. I'm looking forward every time. When I do this, is, this is so easy, uh, Marnie. And as Karen has pointed out, it's not even my recipe, apparently. So it's... <laughs> So, I, shall, I shall explain the, the situation to the viewers. I think, Howard, Marnie, I do believe we're, have we gone live? We are live. I think. Control yeah, we're live. Hi. All right, okay. Um, it's five o'clock, it's Saturday, and it's live from Great British Food Festival's Cook Along Live Kitchens. Yes, it is. Um, Welcome to all our YouTube viewers and thank you very much for joining in and I am hosting tonight my great 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 pleasure to host um, Karen and I was on Bake Off GBBL. We are a double up in terms of um, host and chef tonight because I'm a GBBL and our chef is no other than the great famous popular Hilarious Howard Middleton oh. of a GBBO fame. Yeah. So that, Howard, that, oh, yeah, Karen, that, that's balls. a lovely, um, that's a lovely uh, warm up, isn't it? Thank you very much. Lovely. Well, I mean it. We love, we love John. My husband's. I'm in my caravan, as you know. John, my husband, is with me, and we both love working or being around you because you're funny. You make a Oh, and that is important. It is important. Yeah, so I've, anyway, I've, I'm going to um, just... Sorry, go on. No, no, carry on. No, I was just going to say, um, it, 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 this is, hasn't this been awful that we've not actually uh, been together at an event this year? And it's that, like, I really miss that. So. This is lovely that we can we at least do, do it. We won't know what to do with ourselves. Um, we won't know how to behave like. when we get together. <laughs> <laughs> so, viewers, we do, we bring. <laughs> about today's bake, I just want to give you a do quick you insight into what I thought the bake was. I, I Go on, then. just been having a little chat with Howard off off screen, so to speak, and I said, Howard, have you ever, have you ever actually done this bake before? And he said, of course I have, I've written it, the, the recipe. I went, oh, oh, sorry, I got the impression you'd plucked it off somebody's website. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he wrote it for that person's website. So Howard, <laughs> so yeah. I'm correct. Can you, no, I'm, I'm going to pass to you now, Howard, and let you put the record straight on this recipe, please. Right. So it was a recipe that I did um, last year. Uh, or was it earlier this year? I don't know. Anyway, at some point, possibly last year. And um, it was in collaboration with the uh, flour company, Dove's Farm. So um, it's a gluten-free recipe. Um, so I'm using Dove's Farm gluten-free uh, self-raising flour. I suppose you could use just standard self-raising flour and I'm assuming um, that you are, Karen is, yeah. Um, yeah. I think what, I can't remember how they described it, but they, oh, they gave it such a lovely description about how for a gluten-free sponge, um, it, it's got a lovely moist texture to it. Um, so yeah, it's a pudding. It's a very autumnal pudding. Um, it's got kind of apples three ways in it. So we're going to use dried apples. Um, it's also got some apple juice, which is soaking the fruit. Uh, and I'm going to try and do something a bit artistic with a fresh apple as well. Um, not entirely sure how artistic. Um, the photograph that they actually took the website, somebody said, uh, and that wasn't my photograph, it was one that, that the uh, Great British Chef took. Somebody said that it looked like a pickle on top of the pudding. So it's not a pickle on a pudding. It's, it's just an artistically 
artistic twist of apple, uh, which I hope I'm going to do. If you've got a melon uh, baller, which I had a melon baller, but I seem to have mislaid my melon baller. That would be amazing because uh, there would be like little, little apples. apples. Yes. Yes, I know that is exactly what I wanted, but I can't find my melon baller. I ain't so, got a melon um, baller in the camera no. No. <laughs> well, you if have, it turns you? up, if it turns up at some point, we might uh, we might turn to that. So well, that's what they, me... anybody watching at home, if you use a, a, a melon baller in apple mm. or pear, mm. you get a bowl of apple, yeah. and then if you caramelise that down, like a, it looks like a yeah. miniature apple, probably right. apple, doesn't it? Oh, that'd be lovely. That's what we wanted, but anyway. That's okay. what we wanted. So, Howard, before we just go, I just want to bring yeah. in Marnie, who is here. Our She's a regular hostess, and I believe you're going to host me on Wednesday. Is that right, Marnie, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I would love to. Thank you. Uh, so, thank would you, you just like to you. just like to tell people a little tiny bit about yourself uh, before we start cooking? Oh, and um, um, I'm Mani. I'm working for uh, ThaiFoodMadeEasy.com. Baking is not my niche at all, so I'm really looking forward to learn more about baking. And hopefully, I can do this pudding for this Christmas. How about that? That would be great. Hey, yes, little miniature Christmas puds. Yes, <laughs> lovely, Mani. Thank you. Right, Howard, take it away. Okay. Oh, Petra here. Hello. Oh, Hello, Petra. Petra's in. Yes. Hey. Hello, Petra. Oh, I'm so glad. You, have you just come home from work? Yes. I, I, I'm not cooking because I didn't have the ingredients, but I just came to hang out and have a look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. You can watch. the market today, Petra. <laughs> make comments. Yeah, how was the market today down in Deal? Uh, it was it was quite busy, uh, very windy. It's always windy by the sea. Oh, but it was yeah. <laughs> so, you will, Patrick, just, just tell our viewers about, uh, we've mentioned market stalls. They might think you're selling T-shirts or something. Would you like to just explain <laughs> what you do down there in Deal? Oh, in Kit. Where have you gone? So, me? Yeah. Yeah, Petra. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically I do everything with chilli in the market. So chilli condiments, hot sauce, uh, and also meals. Uh, and this week I was very inspired, I think, by all the cooking we've done. So I did Thai-inspired food. It was delicious. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you. Right, we better start because I'm standing right on top of my oven and it's um, getting a bit hot. So I'm ready, Howard. We're all ready for you. Lovely. Okay, so uh, in the bowl here, um, the recipe says that you soak some dried apple and sultanas in cloudy apple juice uh, for about an hour. If you haven't done that already, then it's going to take you an hour uh, before you can actually start baking. But I did do this uh, a while ago. So the dried apple sultanas in cloudy apple juice. I think Karen is using cider because she's a bit of a lush uh, like me, yes. perfectly on it. But um, also <laughs> it's like what, you, what you've got to hand as well, isn't it? The other That's thing it, that I'm doing is I'm cracking two eggs. Uh, so I'm going to put, put two eggs into a mixing bowl. Um, and I'm just going to add to that. How um, which kind of eggs are those? Which kind of eggs? These are... <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you know, Smith? These are mixed size eggs. They're free range mixed size eggs. Um, and if you sometimes call mixed weight mixed size eggs. And uh, do you want to know about mixed size or mixed weight eggs? <laughs> oh, I thought you would. Yes. So uh, what you'll find is if, if you see these mixed size or mixed weight eggs, the uh, two things about them. One is that they tend to be a lot. Uh, cheaper than um, the sort of large eggs or medium eggs uh, because you're taking a bit of potluck. Um, the other thing, that, the other benefit of these is that it's a lot better for the hens. And the reason why it's better for the hens, if you think about it, if you're a little hen sitting there 
and you are on large egg duty and all you can do that morning is pop out a small one well it's terribly demoralizing whereas with mixed size eggs it takes a lot of pressure off and it takes the pressure off the bomb <laughs> are you happy now Nick? are you happy <laughs> yeah, no, <that's> <laughs> oh, right. yeah. it's like a common joke that you're always mouthing between each other when you do food festivals <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I drag um, my eggs into the sugar? Because I've got I have yeah, I've got I, I, I put my I put my eggs in first and I'm now adding the sugar, but it's entirely up to you. Uh do it whichever way you want. And I'm also so going to add to sugar, that. sugar, brown sugar and two eggs, yeah. Two eggs. And also three tablespoons uh of oil. Um, which Rita, I'm just going to... tablespoons. If this is in lieu of any butter or marge, we're using it oil is. for this. Thing, yeah, can't we? yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, so it's it's um okay. it's possible to do this oil without, going in. without butter. And then what I do we do? I like an oily cake. You, you like oily cake? Well, I like it when I've made them. Sometimes, if you make a vegan cake, they use oil. Obviously, yeah. because we can't use butter. And they come out really well. So three tablespoons of oil going into brown sugar and two randomly picked by the egg. <laughs> yeah. Ten. Yes. And then I'm I'm uh, I'm whisking the now. So we're using a if possible you can use a handheld electric whisk, but you can use an ordinary whisk, it's just harder on the on the oh, whisk. Yeah. Oh, do you have the quietest whisk ever? Is it a quiet whisk? Yeah, can't even hear it. Not, Pardon, Nick? It's not quiet for me, but it might be because I'm wearing. Uh, oh. Is it because I'm wearing the headphones? Yeah. For any particular length of time, you want us to keep whisking? Sorry, Karen. Is there any length of time? Are we looking for anything to happen, or is it just to emulsify um, it? No, not really. Uh, just a few. What all we're wanting to do uh, is get them properly. You will notice um, sometimes when you're whisking that the colour of the mixture changes, so it gets lighter oh, as the um, as the sugar in the egg and the oil start to emulsify. You'll end up with a lighter looking thing. But to be honest, this is a really forgiving recipe. So. Yeah. So we just give it a burst. Oh, and what got you into doing gluten free recipes? It was a um, couple of things, really. I, um, oh, let me just turn that off. So I got a work colleague, uh, or a couple of work colleagues who were gluten intolerant, and I used to take cake tin. Um, there was one particular cake, a lime and coconut cake, which I took in and everybody raved about it, this gluten-free cake. And then when I did Bake Off, I thought, oh, I, do you know, I might do a gluten-free cake as my first cake on Bake Off. So I did a, um, basically this lime and coconut cake. I turned it into a passion fruit and coconut cake. And we had to do a, a, a layered cake, you know, sandwich cake. So I made a filling and a topping and all sorts of things like that. And then because it was, when that programme was broadcast, people started asking me for more and more gluten-free recipes. And at the time, basically, I'd got a lime and, a co lime and coconut cake and a passion fruit and coconut cake, and that was it. But I've always been fascinated by unusual ingredients. And so it, it, it just kind of spurred me on to... Uh, looking into alternative flowers and things like that. And then eventually I've got enough to fill a book and, and, some, left, and some left over to put on random websites as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, next, well, that's right. Yeah. So I'm all fro I'm frothy, man. What do we do so next? You're frothy, um, we now add the flour. So I've weighed out the flour. Oops. 
let's check, check that. Lift that up. So I'm putting flour. That's gone a little over. Sorry. Add the flour. And, and a bit uh, of baking what, powder in there, isn't it? Yeah, even though it's self-raising flour, I just add a little bit of baking powder as well, which quite often you would do with a, a standard um, bake as well. That's right. Do you find that, Karen? Sometimes yeah, definitely. Bit... definitely. Yeah. Not too much, because sometimes it goes, and it causes, does it cause them to sink if it go up and then they just sort of sag back down again? So it's just oh, getting the balance. That, yeah, that happens with a lot of things, and not it? But yeah. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> it does, Howard. It does. You know. So let's... Uh, let's Doctor will give you a prescription to sort that out. Um, <laughs> Half a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon as well. I'm cinnamon. hoping this... Uh, uh, this says best before... Um, March 2020. So it's it's amazing that it's Every, even everything this year. was better before March 2020, Howard. It was. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world was better. Yeah. Oh, do you know it's worth never mind, I, I never mind your cinnamon. <laughs> I'll keep this. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, I think mine's all right. I'm just right. guessing. Uh, oh, mixed with a wooden spoon. I need a wooden spoon. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm not to... using a wooden spoon, but it's. Viewers, I mean, you know, you can use your own discretion tools wise. Oh, I'm yes. Using this. Any, any tool will do. Um, we're going to add as well. Well, there's the... some that goes like that. That's cool. No, it's what, from Joseph. Any, any, any dream will do. Any dream will do. Yes. I, 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 I was on a, a, a production of. Uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Coat. When I was twelve, I was part of the I was. choir. <laughs> and it, the crew. I was on when I was nineteen. Sheffield. You were. I what, was one Karen? of the. I was one of the brothers. When I was nineteen, I was one of the what brothers because we were in an amateur group and they didn't have enough lads. There's always girls in amateurs, oh. but not enough teenage boys. So I was naturally. Anyway, we digress. So we just. Are we just so stirring stir this through with our... Yeah. Um, what you have to do... Gently, because is, we don't want... Is... Oh, you don't have to worry about gluten, do you? The thing is, ha Howard, would you tell anybody yeah. that's not familiar with the fact that... Because... Shall I? Yeah, of course The you thing can. is, with flour, any flour that's got gluten in it, like mine has, you've got to be careful when you're baking cake and um, yeah. pastries and scones because if you're too heavy handed with the flour it does spoil the bake it makes it tough or very sad or heavy mm. the blessing of using a gluten-free flour is it doesn't really matter because there's no gluten to disturb is there howard no that's, that's right thing. so if you're doing uh, pastry or biscuit um you know you can keep rolling it out and clumping it together and roll it out and it you know it's never going to get any any heavier or tougher um, what you have to do is is mix it near your neck, uh, basically, <laughs> so that you can see what what we're doing. <laughs> My mother um, always it, said when I was little to stop disturbing the gluten. Remember, viewers, if you're using Howard's recipe with gluten-free flour, this is not applicable. You can beat it to bilio. But if you just do a figure of eight, turning, all right. it aerates the mixture without disturbing the gluten too much. It, so it is, this a right is it the right consistency? Yeah, yeah it is quite, it's quite thin. It's quite thin and, uh, and battery. Yeah, so don't worry Mine about it. Oh, it's not bad. Uh, mine's oh, a topping consistency. Yeah. Hmm? Did, you add your, did you add, have you added yeah. your fruit with the juice? No, you didn't tell us to. Oh, right. All right, so I'm add, wondering. Add, add, add the uh, dried fruit with the with the liquid as well. Oh, I'm okay. going to put in a bit of, then I'm going to use a bit of my, because I'm doing it a bit off piece. Yeah. Because I didn't have the dried fruit. I'm just using a splash of cloudy cider to loosen it and give that apple in this. Oh, I'm okay. going mad, aren't I? I got kicked off Bake Off for doing something similar to that. Putting what, too much booze. Going oh, putting no. too much booze in the cake. Paul Hollywood didn't like it one bit. So my this is my apple mixture. I'm just popping a bit in there. 
a bit of liquid. <laughs> Steady up. Steady up. Right, lovely. So, so mix all, that all I'm doing right. now is I'm spooning the mixture into little, I've got some little uh, small pudding basins. You can get these uh, aluminium ones like this, or you can get um, sort of foil ones like that. Uh, either of those will do. Karen, I think you're using a muffin. Uh, I am only because, there, Howard, yeah. because I'm adapting to what I have, what I carry with me in the in the uh, caravan. This is a silicone muffin tin, but I think it will be. I think it will work. So yeah. we're going to put. So how much would we fill up? Are we going three quarters full? Um, do you know? I have no idea. Uh, I think it just. Well, we to allow for rising, haven't we? We, to allow we, for we do need to allow for a little rising. Uh, yeah, but I know it makes six. So all I'm doing is I'm dividing it between six. six. Right. Yeah. yeah. Six. So. So. And you'll find lovely. as well that the um, the apple has uh, the dried apple has puffed up in you know because it's been soaked. It's up into these um, quite chunky bits, but don't worry about that. Is this a is this a little bit like a sticky toffee pudding where they use the dates as fruits, but in like a caramelly browny puddingy autumnal feel to it? It probably is. I've done. In fact, there's a, a, a recipe in in my book which is very similar to this, uh, which is. A sticky figgy pudding, which is like a sort of Christmas, uh, Christmas. version. So, um, Lovely. have you been doing a lot of baking? Did we, did we tell anybody what we Howard? Sorry, have you been doing a lot of baking during lockdown? Are you working on some recipes or? I, I've been working on some recipes. I've been uh, doing quite a few uh, Zoom classes, and uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I have been doing actually. More um, gluten free. Uh, some gluten free, not all gluten free actually. Interestingly, um, because some of the stuff that I've been doing has been uh, from requests uh, from. American um, participant or potential participant, and quite often, um, what you're doing is you're coming up with recipes that that people can adapt. So um, sometimes they might want gluten-free recipes, and sometimes they might want uh, vegetarian recipes or uh, meaty recipes or whatever. So it's um, so you've got quite a big. Mystery. Quite a big following in the States for you, Howard. You've got a good I family, seem so. to have, yes. I mean, uh, yeah, and some of it's actually, um, you know, not like a rude following either, which is... <laughs> is uh, nice, it's a refreshing a change, note. that, Howard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah. Howard's very popular on the, um, on the hen party circuit, I do believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what. No, I can't imagine. To be honest, why, is, why do you think it is then, Howard? I don't know. I think I, I think they probably um, know that they're going to have a bit of a laugh, but actually, I'm I'm not um, I'm not in any way threatening. <laughs> not threatening in any way. No, not in any way. Do, do you know, um, Karen? Looking at these, it's only come to about halfway up the. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder well, mine, whether mine's I've come up. Mine's all right there. In, yeah. I, I, have we all got our ovens on? And what temperature in a, if you weren't in a caravan would we, we be looking at? So I put. I, I think in the recipe it says 180 Celsius, and um, I reckon that if you've got a fan assisted oven, I would reduce that by 20 <laughs> degrees. So I'm saying 160. <laughs> Uh, so it's about gas, uh, should we say about gas four? Yeah. Um, okay. If you've got Fahrenheit, 
we've got this 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 lovely chap in America who converts everything so that people in America can understand what yeah he understood oh fantastic and um it's amazing isn't it yeah <laughs> no he's uh he's very good at knowing uh oh, but is it okay this. if i put mine in the oven now oh yes please yes i'm going to put mine in the oven as Howard, well when you were on the great british bake-off did the did the did the production team get you to stop everything <laughs> when you were going in the oven and, and short them over Absolutely, you've got to I'm go, call for a camera. I'm going to, in, I'm going yeah. in, and they'll come flocking around you. So I'm doing that now, just for, just for a little bit of nostalgic sake. I'm going in. There's nobody come. I'm, I'm going, going in. in. Going in. Hey, Molly's going in. Let's go in. Uh, and I'm going to time that for about 20 minutes. Okay. So, Chef, what now, next? Now, we need to uh, make a sauce for this. So, um, this is the point where if you've got uh, an, a, a melon baller, you could um, basically ball your apple into tiny little balls. But if you haven't, then what I'm going to do is just cut it into sort of thin slices. So, I'm going to pour it. Are we going to be concerned about this going brown? Do we do anything or do we just hope for the best? Well, do you know, I, I, it's one of those things that people worry about, isn't it? And yes, you would, ideally, you would put a bit of lemon juice or something. something. But I haven't got a lemon, so it's going to have to, um, it's going to have to go a bit brown, isn't it? That's all I can do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. It'll be fine. So it's slicing it very fine. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to cut some thin slices. Um, oh, I didn't take the skin off. Is it okay with that bit of skin on? Oh, yeah, I like a bit of skin. Do you know, when I when I did Bake Off, the, my top, my uh, caramel apple trifle, um, I, I, I remember Mary Berry's face when she found that there was a bit of skin on the apple. She wasn't happy about that at all. Yeah, well, you do a good, you do a good Mary Berry... Um, Impression. Tell them about tell them about your buns. Was it your buns or your scones? Something. Oh, I, got can't, a star I can't tell about that. No. Right, yeah. no. Oh, no. Can't tell. no. But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Look like she's no, I've got some. Uh, I might do something creative with rings of apple. So I'm, I've, I've cut these into thin rings. Uh, so I've, I've used an apple core and I've taken the, the core out of the middle. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is melt a bit of butter, but I'm going to do that over here. Now, what I'm concerned about is if I move the laptop over there, will it lose, um, what's it called, Wi-Fi no, or something, a connection? Do you not think? Should we try no. it? Should we try it? If I disappear, then... Oh, you, you've re wallpapered every wall, Howard. I've re wallpapered every. I've got a nice print on here as well now. Fish and chip print, yeah, which uh, looks a bit nice. You like to keep so, the skin on your fish as well, though, Howard? Sorry? You keep the skin on your fish as well, or just the fruit? <laughs> I love skin on fish. You know, yeah. like on salmon. Oh, yeah, I love, I love crispy salmon skin. Um, but not in this recipe. How's that? Can we see? If I go like that, can you see? Yeah. You can just about see you've that, can't you? So what, can, Howard, can you just run by me and, and all the others what we're actually doing on this? So I'm getting ready. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need 25 grams of, uh, that's a bit better, isn't it? 25 oh, grams yes. of uh, butter. And I've got here 50 grams of sugar as well uh, but oh. what i'm going to do to begin with is put the butter in the pan and just soften uh, some of the apple so if we get uh, let's get some butter so we're so going to not... put them yeah so butter in the pan and we're just going to so we're melting the butter first gently melting the butter in the pan Yeah, I've got my butter here. It's very soft. That goes in the pan. 
Lovely. Lovely. Bit of butter. And we're going to when that's when that's liquidy liquidy. Are we just gonna run the apple around in it? Yeah, exactly. Just to soften it a bit. I should have done this earlier actually because um this pan takes ages to warm through. Anyway. I'll just tell you a little bit of trivia about these apples. The, has we all heard of Edward Elgar, the composer? Pomp and Circumstance from the Last Night of the Proms. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. this apple came from his orchard where he was born. Oh. Fancy that. I was there how last week. Oh, right. I was going to say, how do you know with that? <laughs> yeah. I went. We went to we went to visit his birthplace, and it was closed to the public. But just as we were trying to, when we sussed that out, the gardener was just locking up, and she said, wow. "Oh, it's locked." She told us a lot about Ed, oh. Edward Elgar, and she said, "Would I said look at all the apples on these?" And she said, "Would you like some?" And she gave me a whole bag full. So if you notice anything on my Instagram, has got apple base this week. It's because I've got a sack full to use. <laughs> so can I put my apple slices in here now? Um, please, if, Howard. If they've, um, yeah, my butter's not quite melted yet, so uh, yeah. as, soon as, it, as soon as it has, pop, pop your apple slices in. Yeah. You just want to make sure that they've sort of softened a bit. You can, they can still have a little bit of bite to them. Um, it, it's not a problem at all. In fact, I think, do you know when, uh, I think in, in the introduction to this recipe, um, I think it said um, that. Um, oh, is that somebody at the door? <laughs> <laughs> bring him in, bring him in. Is that somebody at the door. Could have been an interesting uh, thing to have a visitor to oh, Howard's can't kitchen. Bring that. It can't be Peter, can it? Oh, it can't. <coughs> anyway, I, can't, I don't think there's anybody there. Um, so what I was saying, was, yeah, in the instruction to this recipe uh, on the website where it features, uh, I think they suggested that you could double the amount of sauce because the sauce is so delicious. And I think actually what they're saying is, Howard, you know this recipe, you could do it twice as much sauce. So yeah, if you did want to double the amount of, of sauce, I'm making, that's an idea. So I'm just going to pop the uh, apple in here. Yeah. And How's everybody uh, doing, Marnie? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I just put apple in. Um, how hot is this butter need to be? Or uh, it doesn't matter. We just wait until um, apple slightly soften. Yeah, exactly. And you want it soften because you're going to uh, kind of manipulate into shape later. Oh, yes, that's, a, a, that's okay. a good way of describing it, Marnie. Yes, manipulate my apple, yeah. <laughs> what did we say we were going to be doing with them? Shaping manipulate. Them. Manipulating oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to do it the right word, so uh, twist yeah. it and bend it. Yeah, yeah twist it. So do we take oh, the apples yeah. out of the butter then when we've done it? We made them, what yeah, we so when, when they're softened, we take the apples out and then we oh, okay. put the sugar and the cream in there and make oh, our, our sauce. Caramel. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, it, it, although they're called sort of toffee apple puddings, it's not really a caramel because we're not we're not kind of um, heating the sugar until it, it browns. We're just using a brown sugar and letting it dissolve with the butter and the um, and the cream. Do we put the cream in when the butter when the when the sugar's dissolved though? Don't we? We don't put the we put the cream in last because I always uh, make a mess of anything when I put. I've been waiting to do this with you, Howard. Yeah. I've been waiting because I find whenever I put cream into the molten sugar it seizes the, it goes like thick like 
Coffee, it won't well, stir. I, I, I when I did it, it I, I literally put the cream and the sugar in at the same time and just let the sugar dissolve. So, Interesting. Oh. Well, we'll do it your way and see then. This is what, this is what I want to do. I, I need to learn IML technique. Yeah. So, I, so I'm, I'm going to take my apples out now because they're soft. They're soft. Right. You think it's time? I don't know. Mine have only just gone in, really. So I'm going to give it a bit more. In fact, I might turn this up a little bit. Just to... Okay. Just give this is going to be quite strange, isn't it? Because actually, the view of me is my tummy, and uh, which has grown enormous over <laughs> the last few months, and a frying pan. So I'm like this um, headless creature. <laughs> So my apples are starting to take on a nice sort of golden hue. Oh, what are they? Wow. Yeah, look. What can you see? Very nice. Yeah. How's the running going, Howard? You're not getting out running? Yeah, no, I have been doing some running. Uh, I've not uh, I, I've not been out this weekend, actually. So I'm feeling a bit um, like I need to. But... Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I mean, it, it's really tricky as well because I've, I've tended to be running around uh, our park very early in the morning and um, because of trying to maintain social distancing, um, the, the lake in the park tends to have people either fishing or walking dogs or running and uh, you think, oh, that's just getting a bit too crowded. So I run round a bowling green <laughs> and I run round it and I run round it and I run round it until I'm absolutely sick of running round this bowling green. But at least I'm getting out. So, yeah. so just while I've just had a thought while I've been musing my apples. What what about the uh, bake off starting on Tuesday then, Howard? Are you, oh. what, do you get excited or does it make you feel a bit sick? I do get or, excited. You know, yeah, no, I, I'm uh, I'm going to be doing um, the Bake Down podcast again. Uh, so that will go, uh, so that's with Bake With a Legend, and that's going to be with Jane Beadle. Uh, Jane and I did yep. it last year. And uh, I think we're going to be having some guests this time, aren't we? I don't, are you going to be a guest at some point, Karen? Oh, well, I haven't been okay. invited, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you will. I have no idea. I think you will. Oh, Thanks I'd like right. to. It is, a, it is a good laugh. It is a good laugh and, and everything. It'd be really great to be invited along. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, it all but starts on Tuesday. It, we're, doing be it, uh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Obviously, by a Zoom this time. So, uh, yeah. so that will be interesting. So it means that I might not even have to probably get dressed in order to do it. No, you can do it in your pajamas. <laughs> right. Like to be um, so, right, I'm, I'm taking uh, my, my apples I'm are coming out now. I'm just popping them into one side. All right. Lovely. Yeah, so no, I look forward to that, Howard. So if you can get, you know, get me an invite, that'd be amazing. And uh, yes, yeah, so we'll be watching yeah. on Tuesday, watching all 12 bakers start off. Have you learned the names yet? I've, only today I've managed to get, well, managed, but I've got, I've got most of them on my Instagram now. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, well done. Well, one person I could I spotted one that was like following me, and I, obviously I didn't I didn't realise. So when I looked at him, I could see all the others. So it's like a domino is stacked up. Once oh, you get yeah, one on, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, so so we're all best buddies. Uh, the first one was, a da was the David one? guy. David. Oh, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and I've got Rowan because Terry was asking about Rowan, because the Rowan guy is from near to where Terry lives at Gloucestershire, because Terry and I did um, an interview on Hereford and Worcester BBC Radio the other day, um, yeah. and they were interested in, in Terry because that one of the contestants, Rowan, um, he is, lives in the same area. So am I just going back to this? Because I don't want to burn my butter. Am I okay to put my sugar into the pan now with the cream? I, I or should I wait for you? And, and the cream in the pan, yeah. And on a low, on a low heat initially, a low heat, 
I think so. I've turned it down because I've turned it up for the... Uh, I've turned it up to do this, the apple slices, but I'm now turned it down. Actually, this is one of those pans that retains heat quite a lot, so I might, might turn it down even oh, more. First time ever then, Howard, I'm putting my cream in early doors before the sugar's actually yeah. melted or done anything. I'll show the viewers, because well, this is... The sugar a novelty is, for is me. melting quite quite quickly. Not many yeah, calories in there. <laughs> no, not at all. You, no, you don't need to do no, exercise no. afterwards. <laughs> so I might put the cream in bit by bit or all in one go. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you wow. can see that, but that's actually not a bad smooth. So it's a nice running. Is, is, is this a nice running sauce? It's not a thick toffee. No, no, no. It's going to be no. the loose yeah. one. I get it. Because if we were going to make a thick one, like a proper caramel, we'd have to bubble it up, would we? Yeah. Exactly. To get the sugar to yeah. a point. Yeah. So I think that that's not far off, actually. Yeah, so this one's going to be more velvety and more runny. Oh, lovely. I, I love your choice of words, Marna. We're manipulating <laughs> apples and with a velvet sauce, velvety sauce. Yeah, you need a job on M&S doing those, doing those adverts. <laughs> Practice that voice. Right, Say the word, Marna. Velvety sauce. Velvety sauce. <laughs> You have to do the lid right. like that, Helen. <laughs> Very sexy. So this is such an easy sauce to make, isn't it? Oh yeah. We don't what need sugar thermometers. We don't need to faff up with what it. What did you it just... right, Karen? Yeah, well, it... I don't know because when you've been on Bake Off, I thought it'd be all complicated than <laughs> that. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the. Uh... Let's just turn this. Um, I think it, let's see how long we've got on the, about, I've got about four minutes on the puddings, I think. Um, the one see, the, the thing, back, we're look, not really allowed to open the oven doors, are we? We've got to spy. You know, I, 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 uh, it's an interesting thing that, um, somebody was, I, I was reading something the other day, and it says that, this business about if you open the oven door too early that you you okay for your pudding thing. Somebody said that's not true, but I'm sure it is. It's, a myth. it's an urban myth. It's a, an urban yes. myth. And it's actually well, it to do be. with Yeah, I, I don't know. Well it's I, to do we with always... the, it's to do with losing the heat from the oven, isn't it? So so if you open your yeah. oven door before it's baked, then the whole thing's likely to sink. But if it's just yeah. a quick like two seconds peak. Yeah, it's not it's not uh, no. Because I did it, a little I, I did it mine, team are, building mine, event mine, with... mine are rising to the Good, occasion. That's what they should be doing. Well it's always the worry. It's always a very the other special thing that you might stone. need is a, um, a skewer. To oh, I've got that because we, we can barbecue when we're look. I've got these, I've got loads of these if you want to come down for a barbie. And why do we skewer them, How, Howard? For anybody that doesn't know, um, we're gonna, I want to test in the center to make sure that it. Uh, there's no kind of wet batter on the skewer. However, what I don't want is for it to be completely so dry that nothing is clinging to it at all. A few moist crumbs are what we're looking for, ideally. I find with, with puddings and cakes with fruit in them, it can be quite difficult to judge with a skewer anyway, because you can go through the fruit, which of course is yeah. moist, when it comes out and you think, oh, it's not cooked. But it's just that, that you've hit that spot. So yeah. There, there I'm right. turning my sauce off now because I think it looks divine. It looks divine. I'll show you. Marnie, is it lovely and divine? Yeah. It is yes. lovely and divine. You say the words. <laughs> That's it. Lovely and divine. 
Silkins will. Silkins will. Karen, I have to invite you to sit next to my bed at night time. <laughs> okay. That's a yes. <laughs> Like right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look for something that will act as the oven mitts. Now, I have brought a pair, but I really don't know when. So I'm going. How long with... were they in, Howard? Sorry. How long did you bake them for? How long did you bake them for? Uh, they've been in. Uh, I I I gave them. Let me just cancel this. Um, I set the timer for twenty minutes. But I thought they looked about ready at, at 18. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So they've not had the full 20 minutes. What's on the full, Monty? So, yeah. so Howard, I bag it in the, the, the muffin tin. Usually, yeah. um, it, there is a tendency to be thick. Is there any uh, tip? Should I leave it to cool before I take it out of the mold or? Well, that's yeah. a good point. I I greased my uh, tins, but what I what you find sometimes with these is even if you've greased them, there's a risk of it of it sticking a little bit, which is basically why you make a sauce so that you can hide any imperfections. I, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Pour the sauce over and nobody will know. This is a thing, Marnie. With baking, as long as you've got some good disguises in, in like in hand, whether it's sprinkles, icing, sugar, you know, yeah. bits of sugar flowers, anything like that can hide a multitude. If you see a plate, if somebody asks you to make a plain cake, say no. Because ah. you've got nothing to hide behind, have you, Howard? No, no. I'm if you look at my cakes, I know, they're always very busy. They're always busy, covered with butterflies and studs and all sorts. And that's because I use it to cover it all up. All the mistakes I make. Oh. It's normal. Yeah. Don't, make, don't worry idea. about things like that. Yeah, in this case, I'm oh, yes. That's come out quite well. That looks beautiful, Howard. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. That, that, so that was one of the foil ones. So all I've done is I've just gone round. This, this is amazing. Did you introduce me to these, Karen? Oh, little yeah, tiny I think I offset spatulas. Yeah. Yes. A little tiny offset spatula. Little spatulas. offset spatula. I, spatula. Yeah. Spatula. Uh, yes. I, I, I lost mine, but I, I sent for another one and that, that came the other day. So now you've got this this lovely sort of, uh, you can see some, some fruit in there. Um, let's... Let's manipulate uh, an apple. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. In this case, I'm going to tell everyone that, oh, I love a lot of sauce. That's why I put a lot of sauce. Yeah. I like it to be, <laughs> because I like it to be juicy. I don't know. Do you think this would look... Nick, you're very good at, at sort of presentation. Uh, would it look better on a black plate or a white plate? Well, I suppose it's quite dark. Maybe I'd go with a white plate. White plate, yeah. I think you're probably right. Except I've just put apple on this one. So let me just take... I don't know what made you think that I'm good at presentation, though, Howard. Because you've got... Uh, well, I, I just think when, when I've seen you sort of on, on these, um, you know... Um, cook along. I just think, oh, Nick, Nick's got it going, hasn't he? In terms uh, of my, my only coordination, trick is I, put, I put the rice in a ramekin. That's my only trick. I've got one but trick. That, well, that's nice. That's <laughs> one trick, one trick. Yeah. How are we manipulating the apples? I've got my my John's trying to get my puddings out here. Um, oh I'll yeah. Into that. How do we manipulate an apple then? Well, well, all I would suggest is that you take, um, so if you take a ring of apple, and all I've done is I've cut it with a little uh, slit into the centre, and then you can sort of twist it into a shape. Like you, would a, what, like you would a slice of lemon? Yeah, just to sort of sit on top. So I'm, I'm going to, um, 
Oh, I see. I'm going to pour a little bit of sauce and then and then put the apple on top. Like, like sort of like that, viewers. You you've got your apple yeah, yeah. slice, twist, and then it sits it. proudly. Yeah. So uh, let's pop it on the one. I'm just wondering if you, you could do an apple, you could roll a piece, you could do all sorts. But if oh, you've got yeah. the melon ball though, with the little balls, how beautiful that oh, would be. Oh, they would look lovely. Yes. John's oh, saying it's nice, he's just had a little taste. Howard? I need to get a... Yeah? Howard? Could you make it... Could you cake vegan and replace the eggs? Um, you could... Uh, I, I've not tried it with uh, sort of egg replacer, but I'm sure it would work because you're not um, you're not particularly separating the eggs or anything like that. So all you really need is just that that replacement protein going in. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure you could do. And certainly the uh, the sauce would work with um, just use a vegan butter or a, a, yeah. a you know. And yeah. uh, something like some oat milk or almond milk or something like that. Um, yeah, that, that would be absolutely fine. Ah. Oh, I've just got these. I've, I've left one. I like, odd, I like odd numbers for this sort of thing. So um, these are my, my little ones. W would we put the caramel sauce drizzled over and then the apple on top? Is that the... I, that's what I've done. Yeah. So all I've done is, <laughs> is I've, I've poured a bit of the sauce over. And then pat this this little uh, twist of apple on top. On top yeah. of that. So I just want yeah. a single plate. I mean, my serving options are limited because I've only got plastic. It's not the best. And they're all bright colours. So Petra, would you use a... Uh, <laughs> Petra, would you use chia seed as a replacement? Or... Those, uh, well, I like to use chia seeds. I like the flavour and the texture, so... Yeah. I just if it was possible. I'm, I'm a terrible baker. <laughs> I can't oh, believe it. Oh, no. Are you vegan yourself? No, not at all. But um, I try to eat more vegetarian and vegan food. I do eat meat as well. Right, so. Look at that. <laughs> oh, what? This is amazing. Howard, this is really lovely. Oh, God. Oh, oh very glossy. nice. There's some oh, more lovely. words for you, man. It's glossy. <laughs> it's shiny. It's silky. Oh, thank you. oh wow. It's all right, isn't it? It's, it's great. Lovely. It's bright. That is the main thing. I'm really pleased. I, I think... Uh, Karen, I think you're absolutely right. Whoever did come up with this recipe, uh, <laughs> you need, you need to pay him. Well. <laughs> you need, you need to get in touch and be honest, because <laughs> it's too lovely. Look. <laughs> Look how beautiful that little thing is. No idea. Mm. I think it's lovely, Karen. Although it's on plastic plate, but it looks beautiful. Plastic plate, I know, I know. But yes. yes. Let me turn this light out and then I can try and take a shot without. It's the Instagram photo, Howard. Not necessarily, but I just thought you like to have some shots, don't you? Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, oh, my. I can't believe that. This wonderful. Such. Viewers, I'm going to just address our, our YouTube viewers now and just tell you I'm not making this up. Well, I would never would anyway. It's not the way I do it. It is the simplest thing, but it looks cracking. And I, I haven't tasted the, the pudding yet, but the sauce and the way we've presented it with that manipulated apple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who could write us? Who could write it? I don't know. Uh, oh, it was Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it was our Howard who did it. Yeah, you right. see. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other thing I should say as well is that these puddings, um, you, you can um, let them go cold and then keep them in an airtight tub or container. Just give them a, a, a quick blast in the microwave 
and uh, you can warm them up that way. So they, they, you can, you don't have to eat them all at once. And you the can sauce. Store them. And so, the sauce coming in the fridge well, it, and just it's really yeah, and, and just warm that up again if you want. But to be honest, we've made oh. so little of it that actually you could afford to eat that with with half of them and then make the sauce up again, couldn't you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. On ice cream, anything that's lovely. Well, I, I I just can't wait to get the camera out. I just wish I'd got a decent plate. I shall have to have a look. But yes, so has everybody finished? Marnie, can I have a look at your finished deliciousness, please? Yes, there you are. I tried to put some green on it, and it's lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Hey, look, so now how do you feel about that when you say, um, all seriousness, joking aside now for a second, you say that you're not um, a competent baker, you're not got much experience. How do you feel about that? I feel really proud of myself. I mean, if I, I can do it, anyone do it. But, um, you know, when I first pour it in the muffin tray, I was like, this is going to rise because it looked really runny. Like, look at this. I can't believe it. And this is a perfect size. Should I have yeah. it with ice cream as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, we've, only used, we've only used uh, half a, a, a sort of tub of, of cream. So if you wanted, you could very easily whip up the rest of the cream and, you know, squirt a bit of cream at the side. Or as you say, it'd be lovely with a bit of ice cream, whatever. Yeah. This is, I mean, I, I'm not known, I don't do dinner parties. I, I, if people come to my house to have something to eat, really. But, you know, if you're having something and you wanted to make it, like you said, Marnie, for Christmas, if, if, if you're not fond of Christmas pudding or anything like that, or it's an extra, like, New Year's Eve meal, or whenever you wanted a nice meal... With a nice bit, it's 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 elegant in a way, you know what I mean? Because well, I've done mine in the muffin tins like you, so it's not overly big. It's not a great, great big dollop of pudding on there to fill you up. It looks light and appetising and so easy. You could you could put this on the table and, and um, impress anybody. Sure. Yeah, I think so, and it's a perfect size as well after the heavy meal. I think that is exactly. a good choice. Yeah. Well, then we've all done. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, look at you in your stripes, standing there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Howard, seriously, like we, we have a good banter with it and, and, and everything, and, and we're all good friends together on, on, on here. Uh, but I, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today <laughs> and for sharing what is your recipe at the end of the day with us. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's now going to be mine with the three. Thank you. I think you might see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Right. So until we meet again, um, same time, not the same, not the same time. Our next um, episode, if you like, of the Great British Food Festival's Cook Along Live is on Wednesday coming, the twenty third of September, and for once. I'm in the driving seat in terms of I shan't be hostessing. I'll man is doing that. I'm doing the actual cooking. So stand by your beds, eh? <laughs> you don't know what. Um, no, it's nice. It's my husband's birthday. We're still in the caravan and it's a lovely. It, in fact, I have to say, thinking about it, when I say I don't do dinner parties, I don't. But if you were serving the Porsche stroganoff that we're doing, which can be made vegetarian, vegan, if anybody wants to ask me, I can conjure something up. But this, to finish that posh nosh meal would be amazing, John, don't you think? He's putting thumbs up. Yeah, so it's a thumbs up from both of us <laughs> in here. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for joining the Great British Bake Off Cook Along Live. No. Great British Food <laughs> Festival. <laughs> I've got I've got that on my mind on Tuesday. Sorry, I'm going down a different path because I'm that excited. Oh, I've got I've got I've got the um oh it doesn't matter where's the television paper. I was just gonna show you. I've got I've got television paper ready. Anyway, so thank you very much, Howard, once again. Thank you, Marnie. Pleasure. Thank you, Pepper. thank Pleasure. you very much um for inviting us all along and we look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, Bye. thanks guys. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. I've loved it. <laughs>